guys, so this is the little album that we're gonna be creating. It's eight and a half by four and a half inches, and it's just a little folio style. It opens up and has sort of two sections in there. I'm not gonna go into great of a detail, um, but I just want you to see that you're gonna be constructing two flap folders and um, some waterfalls on this side, and same over here we open up and have some waterfalls. So let's get started. All right, so let's go over the materials we're gonna use for this project. So I'm using this year's Doodlebug Halloween line. It's called Sweet and Spooky. You're not gonna need a whole ton of it. So I had picked up the six by six paper pad, which I'll use a bit of. Um, I have these little shape sprinkles that I think are absolutely adorable, just little pumpkins. And then in terms of the actual paper, I only picked up four sheets. So I picked up the tag sheet, um, the cut apart sheet with the three by fours on it. So this cut apart sheet has three by fours and some, um, sorry, some four by fours as well. So there's two cut apart sheets that I picked up. And then just some patterned paper and not, not a ton of it, just sort of these three sheets of the patterned paper. So you're, we're not gonna need it all, we're not gonna use it all, but just wanna show you the materials I'm gonna use for decorating. Um, I'm also gonna use this washi tape. If you have any washi tape at all that's Halloween theme, you can use it, otherwise you can cut strips where I'm gonna be using this, but this is from um, Lawn Fawn this year, I believe. So, um, in terms of basics to build the album, so two main things. We're gonna use a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. Um, this is, I can't tell you what weight it is, but it's the kind of chipboard, if you're ordering scrapbook paper online and you get it shipped, it's about that thickness. So it bends a bit, it doesn't have to be super thick. We're not making um, a book, like we're all making a big album, we're making a folio style still, but in this case, I wanna make a nice um, spine. So we've got your chipboard and one 12 by 12 will be enough. And then for the inside, when we do our flaps and folds, etc., I'm gonna use the 65 pound cardstock, okay? Then the usual sub suspects, I will be using my double-sided tape as usual. I will be using my art glitter, liquid glue as usual. And um, if you want to do any inking, I will be inking with Distress Oxide ink in um, black soot, okay? So those are the basics that you need, so let's get started. Okay, so let's get started by cutting out the chipboard for our cover. I'm just, I'm using my guillotine just because I don't want to cut through chipboard with my blade. You could still use your regular cutter, but um, if, you have a, if you have a guillotine, then go ahead and grab that, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is trim four inches off the side. Oh, actually, hang on a second, sorry not four inches, our album is actually going to be, it's eight and a half by four and a half, right? So we're gonna trim off three and a half inches from the side here. Let's go ahead and do that, okay? And now I've got what's left, I've got an eight and a half inch piece and I wanna make it two pieces that are four and a half inches wide. So let's cut those. One and two, all right. And then my spine is gonna be one inch wide. So I'm just gonna line that up here. And so those are the pieces, three pieces I need for my spine, okay? So let's set those down and start to cover them. Okay, so we're going to cover the chipboard. I'm using black cardstock to do that because I like to layer my patterned paper on top of that. But whatever you decide to use, um, you're gonna have to cut two pieces that are six by 10 and a half, first of all. So let's cut those. So this is, oh, this is already 10 and a half. So six by 10 and a half. Okay those to the side and then you're going to need one piece that measures three by ten and a half three by ten and a half okay and now this piece your three by ten and a half piece you're going to score this at one inch all around. Okay, so this actually is my scoreboard. I have a scoring blade on my cutter. 
so I'm scoring all four sides at one inch. Okay, that's one. I will just gently fold those. You don't, don't need to do anything, just fold along them so you can see the score lines. Okay, there's your score lines. So just set that to the side and now grab <clears throat> the larger pieces that you cut and on each of the shorter sides, okay, I want you to score those at one inch each. So there's one, and I flip it over. two and then on the long sides we're going to score it three quarters on each side okay so you might be wondering why didn't I just cut this so that I could score it one inch all the way around the reason why is that you don't need a ton of holdover and if we did it at six and a half, you would have needed two 12 by 12 sheets. So this way, you really only used up one 12 by 12 sheet. So I'm just folding those around the sides. And we're going to do that same thing to the second piece. So again, you're going to score the long sides at three quarters each. And the short sides at one inch each. Okay. Like that. And then we're going to trim these because... We want them to fold nicely around our cover. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and grab my scissors. So I want to show you, I'm going to be cutting these so that I have an angle. Like, there, I'm not, so you can see here my score lines. I can cut right along the square and then these sort of all fold on top of each other. But I don't want that much bulk, so I'm going to cut at an angle to the corner, right, on both sides, and just lop off. Oh my goodness, that wasn't supposed to happen, but we'll cover that. So that's what that that's what we're doing, okay? On each of the four corners, you're just going to remove this sort of very little bit. Don't cut into the corner too far because when you fold this, it's going to cover your chipboard like that, okay? So just go right around. those off. This is just eliminating some of the bulk. So I'll do one with you and then you can go off and uh, pause the video and do the other. But essentially, uh, oh and don't touch this piece. This one's going to be done a little bit differently. Okay, so let's just leave this one to the side. But you can go ahead and cut off the corners in the same way, but don't um, attach it yet. I will show you what we're going to do with that one. It's going to be just a little bit different. Okay, so you can go ahead and cut off all your corners on all of the pieces. But let's go ahead and stick this one together. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. So this is going to just cover the sides of our cardstock. So what I like to do is just put my chipboard, I don't know why I keep calling it cardstock and mixing it up, but anyways, get your chipboard in there, just sort of fold, fold the corners up, okay? And then grab a bone folder just to kind of go press along the edges and that'll give you kind of a really neat, a neat edge, okay? So you can do that all to all the sides. So it'll fold over really nicely. Sometimes I even will stand it up and kind of press against the table like that. We're gonna grab some double-sided tape and what we're going to do, we can put a couple of strips down on the back side of the chipboard to secure it. So let's do that. Okay. Let me just peel, peel these off. Go ahead and stick this down. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're going to put double sided tape along each of these flaps. Burnish that down. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my tool here just to peel back the tape. Now, let me just show you one little trick is that I want, um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my art glitter glue. It's disappeared behind my coffee. I have to show you guys. I have to show you when I'm finished drinking. Oh, there you go. I want to show you my mug. Um, I'm full on into spooky season. Okay, so what you're going to do is for each of the sides, pull your tape back. Okay. And in addition, I like to put some glue just along this edge because it just really helps to keep it folded up. Um, when you fold it over, it just keeps it tidier, I find, rather than buckling. So you're going to put some glue just right along the edge here. Okay, and then go ahead and fold that over. Okay, and I just like to use my, my phone folder again. So see how you've got that nice clean edge? And so you can go ahead and do that on the other side and then the top and the bottom. And that's simply how you cover this, the, the, the cover here. And then we can decorate later with our patterned paper. But So I just like to push that up. You can use your bone folder to help you along. There we go. Okay. And then same thing on these sides. Let me just get my glue down. Okay, so now that you've seen me do this once, you can pause the video, cover your other side, and then uh, have that done. When we come back, we will cover the spine piece, which is a little bit different. So that's, that's how this should look. And we're gonna cover all of this up with patterned paper, okay? Okay, so now we're going to do the spine piece. And for the spine piece, you're going to attach the spine to the center back, but, you're only gonna glue down the top and the bottom pieces, okay? So just go ahead and stick those down. Okay, then I want you to flip it over and just get your bone folder and go along the edges here. Just make a crease into the spine, okay? So just like that. And then you're gonna bring back your two pieces and they're going to be attached onto here like that. Okay, that's how this is going to go. So that's how we're gonna create this folio. Okay, so let's do one side at a time. So you're gonna get your double-sided tape on the back side of this right here, okay? I'm going to do a strip of double-sided tape and a strip of glue. Okay, you can peel that back and just get a strip of glue down. Okay, and then take one side, line it up right in that crease. Okay, as soon as you've got everything lined up, you can go ahead and press that down. Okay. <clears throat> You can fold it over, make sure everything looks good. So you can see what's happening here, right? We've made a beautiful little spine. And this type of spine lets your album lay flat when you open it up, okay? And all of this is gonna be covered with patterned paper, so don't even worry about it. If you like, you can cut this a little bit more on an angle, okay? But let's go ahead and attach the other side. So I'm gonna get down one piece of double-sided tape. All 
cut and a bead of glue, a line of glue. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with my other side and line everything up. And voila, you have a lovely, neat binding. And when you open this up, it will sit flat. And I'll show you how to cover all of this up next, okay? So there we go. So to cover the center, you're going to cut a piece that measures eight and a half. Okay, this is already eight and a half. So eight and a half. by four. And then I'm gonna score each side at one and a half. So scoring at one and a half. So let's bring back our album here. And first of all, let's fold along those score lines. And where this is going to go is to cover, cover up all of this, this mess here, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold back the sides here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so one, I'm folding along those score lines. Okay, and I wanna to attach to the center back first. So let's grab my double-sided tape along each of the edges. So up to the score line, don't cover the score line, right? So let's just trim this off. I got a little overzealous here. And I'm going to peel this back. I'm just peeling back the corners because I want to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to line this up at the top like that. Before I commit anything, I can just adjust it, make sure everything's lined up. And now I can peel these back while that is stuck down. Perfect. Okay, so now I've covered up the back and I've got these two little pieces to stick down. So what you want to do, let's do one side at a time. Get your scoring, um, your bone folder, and just go up and down there in that crease, okay? And we're going to do one side at a time. Let's get some double-sided tape. We're going to do double-sided tape and glue again. So one strip of double-sided tape and one strip of glue, and just peel, peel that back. Okay, and I'm going to, to attach it, I'm just going to fold it up and over. Okay, and I'm just going to go back in there, make sure everything looks good. If it looks like it's bubbled up a little bit on you, uh, it's okay, you're going to cover it. Just make sure it's not, it's not too bad. Mine is sitting flat, so if you... Get in there with your uh, bone folder, you should be fine. So let's do the same thing on this side. And I, this is the hardest part of this album, is making the outside. And once you can do this, you can use this technique on just about anything you like, okay, to make a cover. So you basically have learned how to make the cover if you didn't already know. Okay, and again, I'm just going to fold that over. Okay, this one. Doesn't, it looks like it just, I needed to really fold it again. I want it to sit flat open. So it's giving me a bit of trouble. So I'm gonna try it flat first. And then fold it over. See, so this one's giving me a tiny bit of trouble, but I can just keep adjusting until it's 
sitting properly. So there we go. That looks good. Okay. There you go. That's your little album. So we can leave this alone. We're going to cover all this with patterned paper. Um, and which actually we should probably do. You can cover it with patterned paper or you can cover it with black cardstock. Um, I'm going to just leave it for a second while I think about um, how I want to decorate this. I have to still choose some of my papers. So I'm just going to set it aside and we can start working on the inside of the album. Okay, so I've changed my mind in the span of two seconds and I am going to cover this up with cardstock just so it's nice and neat and we have a nice neat base to work off. So remember these are eight and a half by four and a half and I'm going to cover them up with cardstock so that I'm like not going to leave too much of a trim. I want to go almost to the edge. So I'm going to cut each piece of cardstock to um, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter and that will leave me just a very little trim around the sides, okay? So let's cut these down. Let's get this down to, here's eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. So that is one side and one more. And then I'm just going to simply glue these down. And then we have that sort of all nicely finished. So let's take this out, grab our glue. Try to go as close to the edge with your glue as you can. I'm just uh, moving quickly because I don't want you guys to spend all your lives doing my tutorials. Okay, so there's one side. All right, now see we have a nice, clean, neat base to work off for our album. I just realized too, I was showing you guys the cardstock in white, um, but we're going to use black, okay? Um, or whatever color you're using, of course, to make all my inside folds and flaps. So, I don't know why I grabbed the white just automatically but we're going to use black to make our waterfalls and pockets etc and just going to go over that just so it's nice and neat great okay so that's the base finished and you know um when you do this like you can see now this is great base for a travel journal lots of things you can do with this that you've just learned so let's continue on with the inside of the album so I'm going to work on the left side first and the way that we work in my videos is that we kind of build as we go. So I'm not going to cut everything first. We're going to cut and then attach and then move on to the next section, etc. The reason I do it that way is I just do not like to have to label all my pieces and then go back and find them. So this way I'm done and it's out of the way. Okay, so for the left side we had two flaps and then a waterfall inside. So let's start um, with the flaps first. So your top flap is going to measure seven inches high by four and a quarter inches wide. Okay, so grab some paper and measure out seven inches. Okay, by four and a quarter. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece and score it at half an inch. So I move this up for you guys a little bit. Sorry about that. There we go. So you're going to score this at half an inch on the short side. So you put your long side along the side of the scoreboard and score this at half an inch. So that'll be our top flap. Okay. So just put that aside for a second. And now while we're here, let's cut the bottom flap. And the bottom flap is going to be two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So I think four and a quarter. Here we go. And then I'm going to cut it down to two and three quarters. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this in here and I'm going to score at half an inch again. Okay. So I have my top and bottom flaps. 
and we can actually go ahead and put those in the album. So grab your album, grab your double-sided tape, and we'll work on the left side and attach this at the top here. Okay, so I'm just going to run that along on the outside of the fold. There. Same thing on the bottom. Okay, now what I like to do is just peel back one corner. Okay, fold it back so you can see it. And then line this up at the bottom. The reason I do this is that I don't want to commit fully until I can see what I'm doing. So I wanted to show you that even though this is black, and let me see if I can get a piece of white under here. Okay, here we go. Right? It's got, I'm about a eighth of an inch from the edge in from each side. Eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch in. Okay, so that's the placement. And I'm just putting it very close to the bottom edge, about less than an eighth of an inch, but not right to the edge, if that makes sense. So just stick that down. There we go. Okay, and now same process at the top. And you just peel back a corner. And line that up. Make sure you're lined up with the bottom flap as well. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so now let's put the waterfall inside. So for your waterfall, you're going to cut um, four of these pieces. Okay, so you're going to cut four pieces that measure three and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, so this is too small. So three and three quarters by four and a quarter, and you'll need to cut four of these. One, two, three, and four. Okay, then you're going to take each of your pieces, okay, and put your four and a quarter inch side along the edge of your score. No, sorry, put your three, three and um, three and three quarter inch side at the bottom of your scoreboard, along the edge of your scoreboard, and score them at half an inch. Okay, so this is my three and three quarter inch side. I'm scoring at half an inch. So do that on all four of the cards and then run your double-sided tape along this edge, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and do those. Okay guys, so now um, you should have your four pieces cut out for your waterfall, but before we add those in, I would like to make a pocket that's going to sit at the bottom of this side here. So grab some paper and you're gonna cut a piece that measures um, two and a half by five and a quarter. Okay, so let's cut down two and a half. by five and a quarter, and then you're gonna score this on three sides. So on the two short sides and the long side at half an inch, okay? So you're gonna score this at half an inch all the way around. And just trim off these corners. Okay, so now you can fold back on your score lines and let's bring our folio back okay so where what we're going to do is first so open up your two flaps and first thing I'm going to do is attach the pocket to the bottom like that so I'm going to attach that with my double-sided tape okay so we're just going to put double-sided tape all the way around the three sides here Okay, 
and we'll just peel that back off, peel off the backing and stick your pocket down. So I'm just lining this up at the bottom. I want to make sure this still folds over nicely. Just grab your bone folder and burnish that edge. There go. Okay, so that's there. And now I'm going to grab my waterfall pieces. And I want to make sure that they don't cover up the pocket because I want to be able to still put things in there. So I'm installing these. I'm just seeing where we're going to position them. So actually, I want them to start up at the top here. So where we're going to place the first one is up against this edge here. Okay. So what you want to do is just peel back a corner, fold it up so you can see it, and then put your waterfall down, line it up, make sure everything looks good. Once you're happy with that, and what I like to do is I flip over the top, make sure it covers everything nicely, and I just pull out the paper once I'm happy with the positioning. So now we can install waterfall number two. Same thing, pull up a corner. You're, now you're bedding this up against the bottom of the one that you just put in. So I usually flip them down so I can see that everything is lined up. Okay, and I just want to show you that is gone installed right up to the edge of the one above it. Okay, and so the next one we will attach right against here. So it's only four to do, but I like this method where you just line them up, only kind of pull, peel back a corner, see how it's sitting, make sure everything is lined up, make any adjustments that you need to. And it's kind of a foolproof way to get your waterfall in nicely lined up because once one is crooked, they will all get crookeder, right? And the last one. Boom. See, like I can just need to nudge it a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, so there's my waterfalls and my pocket. And we're going to end up sticking some little cards and things in here that will hold the waterfall down, but we will worry about that later. Because now we can go ahead and start working on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side, um, it's a little bit different. It does have a waterfall as well, um, but it's got more of a, a different thing on the outside. So anyways, without further ado, me describing things in a funny way. Let's start cutting out the pieces for the flaps. So there's going to be two flaps here. Let's do the top one first. So bring your paper cutter back and your top flap is going to measure four and a half by four and a quarter. Okay. So there's my four and a half. by four and a quarter. Okay. And now, excuse me, just let me grab this. Just double checking something. Okay, you're gonna put your four and a half inch side along the edge of your scoreboard and score at half an inch. Okay, so you should have, that is your top flap. And now let's cut the bottom flap. Bottom flap is going to be four and, so five inches long by four and a quarter wide. Okay, so four and a quarter. And then put your five inch side along the edge of your scoreboard and score that at half an inch as well. Okay, so there's your top and bottom flaps. Okay, so I am going to bring back my album and we can install the, these here so that we can see what is going to happen next. Okay, 
So I'm just going to get my double-sided tape and I'm putting it off the black so you can see better. Just going to run it across the top of each of these score lines. And then these are going to be installed right here, like that. Okay, so let's take the bigger pieces going at the bottom. So just pull off your corner. And Down, and now we can do the top, same thing. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is put some pockets on this bottom flap, okay? So we're gonna cut out two of these pieces and they're gonna measure two by five and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to look through my scraps here. I think I've got two inch piece. Okay, there's two inches. So two by five and a quarter. So cut two of these, two by five and a quarter, and then score it at half inch on three sides. So on the two short sides and the long side. Okay, so go ahead and make two of these. There's one. And here's number two. Okay, and then once you're done scoring them, put your double-sided tape around those three sides and cut off the corners. Miter those corners like I showed you. And we will attach those pieces now. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm actually putting down my double-sided tape and then I will miter the corners just because it's easier to stick tape to straight edges than uh, angled ones. Okay, so there's one. Okay. I'm going to just miter those corners. Okay, now I'm just going to fold before I unstick anything. I'm going to fold these back, fold back these panels. So, one, two. Okay, now I can bring back my album. These are gonna get stuck down to this bottom flap on the outside. So I want one and two pockets. So let's start with the first one. So this one is gonna go right down to the bottom edge of this panel. So I'm just going to stick this down to this bottom edge. Okay, so there's that one pocket. The second one is going to go about, let me tell you, uh, yes, about three quarters of an inch above this pocket. We're going to put in the second pocket. Okay, 
And so just line that up and there goes pocket number two. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna make little cards and things that'll fit here and that's what's gonna hold down the top flap, okay? And then you have lots of room for more pictures and whatever you wanna do. Okay, so now we're gonna make the waterfall for the inside and these are four by four cards that we're going to be using. So we're gonna cut out four pieces that measure four and three quarters by four and a quarter. So let's just do one together, okay? So four and three quarters. by four and a quarter, okay? And you're gonna put your four and three quarters side, here we go, across the bottom of your scoreboard, four and three quarters side, and you're gonna score that at half an inch. Okay, so now we have a four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch card square after you fold this down, okay? So I want you to make three more of these and put double-sided tape along the f outside of the fold, just like we did for the other side. So go ahead and make three more of these. Pause the video and come back and we will put them into the book. Okay, so you should have your four pieces cut now. So we can go ahead and put these into the folio and I'm going to, um, this time I think I'm going to put them sort of centered Okay, so <clears throat> we're not going to start right at the top. We're going to put them kind of in the middle and bear with me and I'll tell you where the first one is going to go. Okay, so you're going to place your first one about one and a quarter inches from the top. Okay, so from this point on one and a quarter inches, that's where your first waterfall will go. Now this could get tricky because you don't really have you're not going up against the edge, so you can't tell if it's a straight line. So you're going to line up against the sides and make sure it looks straight. Just flip that over on top, make sure everything looks lined up. And if you need to adjust, you can. So I'm just making a small adjustment. Okay, so that's where my first one, before I commit, I'm just going to make sure I'm where I want to be. That's good. I'm going to pull that out. Okay. And now you can go ahead and put in the other three in the same way. And you know what, guys? This is um, basically the end of building the album. So next we can move on to decorating, which is absolutely going to be so fun because we're using, at least I'm using the doodlebug paper for this, and their Halloween stuff is so sweet and cute. I just love it. So I think the next thing we'll do once we're done this piece is I'm going to show you how to put the ribbon onto the cover. So we will work on that next because that will be the way that this little book stays closed or this little folio, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a hybrid because I've done like a chipboard sort of cover, right? Okay. There we go. So let's just take stock really quick of what we've done, right? We've made this one inch spine little folio. When we open it up, we have this flip open with some pockets, a pocket and four three by four waterfalls. And on the right side, we will have some cards sort of sitting here that'll hold down all of this deal. We'll get held down by what we the cards we put in here. Um, once we get all that in order. And then we have a waterfall on the inside. So that is really it for this album. Uh, now we move on to the fun stuff. Okay, so let's talk about how I'm gonna decorate the front cover. And I'm gonna do two things right now. We're gonna put on our ribbon because it's gonna have a ribbon closure. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna attach these two pieces of ribbon front and back. So I've gone ahead and cut down these about 10 inch pieces of ribbon and I'm going to just sort of center them on the front and the back of the folio. Now I have had success with just glue. Um, you might want to put some double sided tape and try that out. Remember that once you stick these down, um, 
you are going to cover them with paper. So they're gonna be pretty secure, but I'm putting some uh, double-sided tape on about two inches at the edge of the ribbon. So this is where I will be attaching my ribbon, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, two inches, okay? And I'm just going to position it so it's centered and I'm going in about two inches as well, right? Just just wherever I put the tape down is, is where I'm gonna stick this ribbon. So let's just take the backing off. There we go. So you can use a ruler if you like, depending on how thick your ribbon is. What I would do is this page is eight and um, a half, so I'm gonna put this ribbon sort of right where the four inch mark hits, that's about the center. Okay, so I'm going to measure four inches from the top and then put my ribbon down here. Okay, perfect. And now I can flip the book over and do the same on the back is just measure my four inches down and then put my ribbon in that spot. So let me just take the backing off. All right, so again, I'm at the four inch, just under four inch mark here. And you can just eyeball that, you know, the ribbons are lined up. So that's really it. That's all you need to do for the ribbon piece. Now you'll notice I have all these pieces, little bits of paper over here. I love this paper. I could not decide what I want for the front cover. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do both this on the top and pumpkins on the bottom. And then I'll use one of these strips, probably this Happy Halloween one, to sort of sit in the middle so that you don't see the seam. So it get, uh, lets me use both pieces of patterned paper. I'm also going to mat these onto black cardstock so they pop. And then behind that, I'm going to have purple so that pops on the black mat, right? So I've taken two of my six by six sheets and I need to cut these down to fit here to cover this whole backing, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. So you're going to cut your first sheet, leave it at six, six inches, um, high but then you're going to cut it at four and a quarter okay so let's go ahead and cut that down to four and a quarter okay and that will go here and then your bottom piece so i need to cover this up with the same matching paper i need to cut that at six by two and a quarter Uh, sorry, not six by two and a quarter. Hang on a second, guys. Sorry about that. I did four and a quarter by two and a quarter is what you want on this piece. Now make sure, because I'm using the stripes, I want them to go this way. So my four and a quarter cut is here. Okay, four and a quarter by two and a quarter. Okay, so that is going to just sit right there. And you'll see we have this little seam, which you can't really see that much, but that's where I'm going to put this little happy Halloween sort of uh, to cover it up, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm gonna open this album this way so it actually sits flat. It's easier to work with, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down. So you can hear you can use double-sided tape if you like. I'm using glue because it's quick. And I actually, I think I prefer the glue, to be honest. Okay, so if you cut this to the measurements I said, you should have about an eighth of an inch all around of the black border. Okay, so there's that. Now we can attach this little guy. Attach that here so we'll just line it up so that looks good okay and this seam like it's going to be covered up so don't worry about that now I want to mat on top of it with the black so you can decide how much you want showing I think I'm going to do 
oh, I think I'll do about a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to mark out with my pen on the opposite side where I want to cut this too. Okay, so I'm matting now with the black, which I'm cutting down based on how much trim I want, how much border I want around this, how much of the purple I want to show. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so we can go ahead and mat this down and see you can see sort of the seam but that's going to get all covered up so don't you worry about that at all so let's go ahead and stick this down okay i like the glue because i can just sort of slide things around if i'm quick and just slide around the paper until it's where i need it to be okay now, I want, this is my patterned paper that I'm going to put on top, so, now, just pay attention here, like I'm going to flip it over to the other side so I can mark on it, even though it's black, but I want a, about a quarter of an inch, maybe around, you decide how you want yours to look, so I'm just marking it out, and remember, I'm putting one of these little strips across, but I need it to be over the seam, so... Really, I don't want this to come past the seam, right? So I want to cut it right where that seam is. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and trim this down. Okay, so that's going to go here. And before I glue it down, let me cut the bottom piece, which is these pumpkins, these little guys. And I'm just going to, I'm flipping it over so I can see where I need to cut it. But again, it's going to be just lining it up here. And then I'll leave about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So, of course, you can use whatever papers you like. But like I said, I just could not decide between these two patterns. So I thought, well, why don't I just use both? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this one down. Okay, make sure I've got an even border all around. Perfect. Now glue the top one. So just lining everything up. If you have like a little bit of a gap here, it's okay, you're gonna cover that. Okay, and now I'm going to use this Happy Halloween strip because I like that contrast on there. So I'm gonna just cut that out of here. Spiders are cute too, but all right, I'm going with the Happy Halloween. It's so hard to decide with this paper. Okay, this is out of the six by six pad. And I'm going to just glue that onto this strip I had left over from this piece that I had cut off. And it's gonna sit across like that. Okay, so it's covering up the seam and it's separating the two patterns for that visual, visual separation. So first I'm just gonna glue the strip on and then I will cut it down to size. Okay, I just realized I'm not on the camera. All I'm doing is gluing, but here it is. Okay, so I'm just strip gluing this together. And now I'm just going to measure out where to cut this, where to trim it. So I want it, the edge to go all the way to the edge of the purple. Okay, that's where it's gonna sit. So that's where I need to trim this. I find this method a bit easier than taking measurements. Um, oh, and look, I have a little happy Halloween that I can save for something else. Just because sometimes you're off a tiny bit. So for these little pieces where we're trimming um, and we're just putting our pattern paper on top, this is the method I always use. I just go in and look at it and use my pen or pencil to mark where my cut lines are gonna go. 
Okay, so I'm covering up this seam from one edge of the purple to the other. Okay, and you can kind of tell you're lined up by the stripes as well. Okay, so that is our cover and a clever way to use six by six papers on an eight an eight inch, eight and a half inch uh, folio, okay? And we're gonna do some more stuff on the cover in a bit. Okay, so let us now turn our attention to the inside of the album and there's a few things that I wanna show you here, okay? So yes, I have gone ahead and decorated the album. It's very basic decoration, but there's a few pointers I just wanna, two things I wanna point out to you. So initially I thought we were gonna make this as a flap that where one sort of card tucked under this and these are too short. This would, the bottom piece would have had to have been a bit longer. So I have done that in my other tutorials and other albums, but for this one, I thought, wouldn't it be cute if I just used these little pumpkin guys? So what you need to do to do that, and we just tuck, you know, tuck that under the little, the little pumpkin. You do not have to do this, it's optional. I just wanna show it to you. So all I did was I created this little card, right? Um, and I just, this is just a pumpkin and little stickers from there. And I stuck it down here at the bottom of this sheet. And all I'm gonna do is simply tuck it under this little pumpkin. And what I did with this one, if you can see, let me see, can you guys see that? I don't know. Sorry, we've got some shadow now. So this is actually popped up on some foam dots. So it's not flush um, with the bot with the page, right? So I can, I can uh, get under there and tuck my, my card under if I like. You don't have to do this. Um, you might think it's too finicky, but I just thought it was cute and I thought I would share that with you. The other thing I wanna show you on the inside is that because I'm mostly using a six by six pad, I don't wanna waste anything. So if there, so I had sort of these pieces left, these cutoffs. So I actually just matted them down um, together with a little bit of a trim up here. And I thought that looks very nice and I didn't waste any paper. So I wanna show you that. And then as far as this part goes, um, nothing too special here. We do have a pocket down here that we will fill up with some goodies. So you can go ahead and put those, those in here like that. And that kind of holds down these flaps. But the other thing I want to show you is, um, and I'm probably gonna, sorry to keep cutting myself off, but I'm probably gonna put something bigger in here so that it actually comes up a bit higher and covers off. So some kind of a photo mat will go in this pocket here. Um, but also I left the back sides blank because that will be for photos. And then in between, there's sort of this half inch space and I wanted to cover that up with patterned paper. So the way to do that is just cut this at slightly less than a half an inch. Um, and you can stick that down and have this covering that little tab that shows, which um, I think that looks much nicer. Okay, so that's that's it for this side, really. Not much more to say. So we can just tuck that under there. Now, on this side, there's a couple of things I wanna show you. So this side, if you recall, we have two pockets and we're going to definitely put some cards in these little guys, in these pockets, and that's gonna keep this section held held down. So you will probably need some more in the top than you do at the bottom. Then you can just probably get some shorter ones uh, down at the bottom. So what I did here is I just used, um, these are from the six by six pad and I cut these out and matted them on some cardstock so they have a bit more substance. And I love them because I can make a list of my favorite Halloween things, um, just some notes. I love this with Frankenstein and the bride, his bride, hello ghoul friend. Um, but anyways, uh, what I wanna show you then is on the inside, um, what I thought I would do is, I have so many, I bought a sheet of tags. And I thought, what am I gonna do with all these tags? And actually I'm gonna put them right here. So this one I will use for journaling and this one I will pop up. So I wanted to just show you that as one idea of how to use up some of these tags. Um, Cause they're, they are really cute, but sometimes they're not really as useful everywhere. So how could I use them up just like this? So I'm gonna put one here and that will be for journaling. And then I have some nice twine that I used um, to offset there. And then I'm going to just get my double-sided tape and just run, this is my double-sided foam tape, and just run two strips down here, cover up the back of this, oops, 
<clears throat> okay, I'll just tear those off. I think actually I better put a piece in the middle or it will sink. Okay, there we go. And you can use also foam squares. And so I'm going to pop this one up just so it has some dimension. But I just think this looks really cute and just something a little different for the inside. Now, when you pop this one up, and I forgot myself, you're going to want to make sure that you actually, look what I've done. Okay, so I don't want this too far close to the bottom because then it won't fold in nicely anymore. So I need to, when you put the pop-up one, you just have to kind of nudge it up a little bit so you have some clearance there, okay? So there you go, that's how that will look. So I thought that's really cute. And then same thing, I just decorated each of these cards um, with my patterned paper. This is from the Cut Apart 12 by 12 sheet, and then just put little strips in between, okay? So you have lots of room here for photos. Um, let's see, you get one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably not one here. Uh, but then you've got your little journaling cards here. There's in there. Here we'll have some photo mats. So you can definitely get some more photos in here. I would say you can put in probably about three photo mats. So seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think you can put three photo mats there. Over here, I think I would leave this. I don't think I would cover this with a picture. But then inside, probably room for... Um, Number 10, depends how small you print them. You could get two here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, about 15, 15 to 20 pictures, depending on how big or small you decide to cut them, okay? Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanna show you is actually, we're going to create a little booklet, and this was good for journaling, or if you have a printer that you can print smaller pictures, um, you can totally do your three by three by two pictures on the back of these cards. So let me just show you that quickly as well. But essentially, um, we're done with this little album, and so that was a lot of fun. Just a cute, cute little doodle bug album to decorate, and easy to put together, and not too much fuss. Um, I still, of course, need to cover the back and the side, so I will show you that in the final walkthrough. But I just want to show you this little waterfall we're going to make out of tags. So another kind of neat way to use up the tags. So what you're going to need is four of the tags. Okay, so just go ahead and cut out four of the tags and then grab your trimmer. And you're going to cut a piece of cardstock down to two and a quarter by five and three quarters. So I just cut my five and three quarters by two and a quarter. Okay. So that's our base, and then you're going to score these little tags right along from this corner to this corner, okay? So you can just kind of put that into your scoreboard and see where it lines up, And but I just want you to do that little score line there, okay? So let's do that on all of the tags that we're going to use. You can choose whichever ones you like. I just picked these ones, thought they were cute. Okay, so we're scoring from here to here, right? Okay, so once you've got that done, what we're gonna do is essentially just attach all of these to the card backing. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I like this October 31st as the top one. So I'm going to use glue just because um, I want to, I might need to squish these around. Now, we're going to eventually trim some stuff off. So make sure you get this right up to the edge at the top. And you want to center it so you have the same distance from each side here. Okay, so we can glue that down. Now just fold it back and come in with the next one. So I'm, I'm doing this a bit differently with the top one, but actually no, we're gonna fold them towards you and put the glue on this side. Okay, and we're sticking them down so you can still see the full tag, right? 
so it's not like the waterfall where we pull it tuck it under we're not tucking it under okay so i want to line that up now i can fold this one back see now if you're using glue because i'm noticing i need to move this over a smidgen and we can do any trimming that we need afterwards just in case we didn't cut these evenly so you see this one needs to just come over a touch Let's see too much there we go okay but I can see a little bit of white so I can trim that later not a big deal okay so let's fold those back and let's come in with our spiders okay I'm just gonna line this up oh that looks good okay and then little Frankenstein or whatever he is, little Dracula, little Dracula will be the last one that goes in. So same thing, check the sides, make sure it's lined up. That looks okay. And that's it. So this is like, here you go, it's so cute. It's just a little tag folio. And we can punch a hole here so that we can put in a ribbon or not. It depends what you like to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm going to punch a hole up here in the top, this top hole, okay? And the other thing I'm going to do is just trim off these sides so uh, it looks like the tag. And anything else, you know, that you think needs some trimming, if you want to trim down the sides a little bit, whatever you like. So I'm just going to cut a length of twine and fold it in half okay and just pull it through okay there you go so here you have a little tag waterfall that you can just stick in one of the pockets and you can use it for little tiny photos or just journaling or whatever, okay? Okay, so let's finish off the last bit of this. And what I'm going to do, keeping it really simple, um, I love the way this looks. And so I love the haunted house image in this collection kit. So all I did was get the 3 by 4 card. And I matted that on some black cardstock. And I'm going to just stick it right in the center and I'm going to pop that up and that'll be it. I will probably use some of my um, dimensional magic on parts of the, the house, but I'm going to pop that up and that is it for this album. So again, I'm going to come in with my double sided, uh, move this out of the way for a second. I'm just going to pop it up with my foam tape. This is the easiest way. To do it, you can use again your foam, foam squares, just a bit in the center. Just remember, I'm doing some things like if I was doing this just for me, I'd probably go with my foam dots because I'm using a lot of foam tape, but I'm just trying to get through the video for you guys. So you don't have to do this exactly like me, but do make sure you put enough foam dots on there. Okay, that's it. And I'm just going to stick this on top. Uh, I think in the center, I was gonna put it down here, but I think I'll more or less center it. So I see, you can see little row of houses at the top and at the bottom. That's it. Oh my gosh, okay, I need to tie it up so we can do a full walkthrough as though we just took this off the shelf. Right, there we go. All right, there's my bow on the side. Oh, this is so cute, you guys. Let's take a look at the finished product. So I did go ahead and put patterned paper around the outside. Okay, so let's open this up. Final, final product walkthrough here. So, so much stuff in here, I, I love it. So this part, I added a few more of those cute enameled pumpkins. So we'll open that up and I've got a pocket here and I've put in, this pocket will hold four by six mats, photo mats. So that's what I have in here for now. 
they are handy they keep this part down I just made a little tag another little pumpkin enamel thing just as an extra piece of decor so we have our little waterfall here okay all right so let's put this aside and then over on the right hand side oh so much stuff so first off we have our little tag this is our little tag waterfall piece just sticks there I've got a photo mat this is just the cards the four by three cards instead of cutting them apart I folded it for a little booklet and then I can put photos on the inside of that another photo mat just left this plain I'll figure it out when I put my pictures in okay then I've got these little guys that I've tucked in the top pocket and now this opens up and we have a place for journaling we open up again and lots of room for photos in here Okay, so that is essentially it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you aren't already a subscriber, I would love it if you would subscribe. If you like the video, obviously, please put a like on it. Um, makes my day. I do this for free and for fun, and I, I love to keep doing it. Um, so knowing that you guys are watching and uh, liking to see my stuff, I will just kind of keeps me going. So please like and subscribe. Please turn on the bell to get notifications of the next time I post. And I hope you all have a spooky rest of your day. Talk to you soon.